welcome to Living Legacy Leadership, where we explore, discover, and share insights, tools, and strategies for a life well-lived into elderhood. I'm your host, Donna Kim Brand, author, speaker, legacy strategy coach, and creator of the concept Living Legacy, where you choose to live life on your own terms while contributing to people, places, and projects along your life journey. I believe that the life you live is the legacy you leave. Now, the guests I bring to you each week, I'll address some unique aspect of learning, leadership, or legacy. This helps you raise your own game as a leader in business and life, and also showcases some extraordinary people who exemplify living legacy leadership. At least once a month, I also offer a training session to skill you in game changer thinking for your own application. So get your notebook ready or sharpen up your memory by tuning in your attention, and we'll dive right in. Well, today is one of those days. We're actually going to do a little bit of a look um, with uh, me at the whole concept and notion of success. Um, you know, success is a very personal concept, even though if you were to ask a lot of people, they'd say, oh, yeah, everybody knows what it means. In reality, given that I teach about neuroscience and how the brain functions, the reality is that if you were to ask a whole group of people, and I've done this many times in workshops, you know, write down, let's say, the first four words or concepts that come to mind when you think of success. Um, there is a lot less overlap than you would think. There are the usual suspects, you know, um, law, family, um, income, no debt, um, happiness, um, status and rank in your job and so on. But what's also interesting is that they, the more, um, if, if you get a group of people who are, say, in the same company and you ask that, they would predict that they will have more of the answers the same. The reality is they have more answers that are different because each of them will define the success based on their own personal angle or slant in relation to success in their career or that particular industry or that specific um, company. So it's really quite fascinating. So I have uh, been reading books over the summer by uh, a new PhD. His name is Dr. Ben Hardy, H-A-R-D-Y. And um, he's written an article where he talks about the uh, hard truths you should know before becoming successful. I'm actually going to share some of those what he calls hard truths. And what they are really, given that his PhD had to, had to do with both psychology and organizational development, they're really about um, psychological perspectives that aren't your traditional or usual suspects in terms of um, thinking what success is. So we're gonna start with one that he says, um, who determines what you can. So um, I'll let you know that Ben, Dr. Ben, comes from a kind of spiritual, even religious background. He is a Mormon, and that's going to pop up uh, a little bit later in terms of his number of children and so on. But um, so he's coming also from that perspective, but it's universal. So there's a parable of a wealthy parent who hesitated to give their unwise child determined by the parent, um, an inheritance, knowing it would undoubtedly be squandered. So the parent says to the child, quote, all, all that I have, I desire to give you not only my wealth, but also my position and standing among men. That which I have, I can easily give you, but that which I am, you must obtain for yourself. You will qualify for your inheritance by learning what I have learned and by living as I have lived. I will give you the laws and principles by which I've acquired my wisdom and stature. Follow my example, mastering as I have mastered, and you will become as I am, and all that I have will be yours. Now, obviously, in our very individualistic uh, Western society, we don't want to be following anybody else's rules, but the principle is live principally um, and develop mastery in something that's appropriate. And um, in this case, uh, um, you then become the person who is principled and masterful, which makes you worthy of success. So um, going through the motions isn't enough. Really, there is no one checklist of things you must do to be successful, even though, of course, in this day of 
instant gratitude and people wanting the five top things or the three top things or whatever um, to be successful. You basically have to fundamentally change who you are to live at a higher level to be able to receive success at that higher level, depending on how you define it. So you have to go from doing to being so that what you do is a reflection of who you are and who you are becoming. And Dr. Ben does uh, write quite a bit about um, your future self and his latest book that's just come out and he's attempting to sell 10 million copies um, as a New York Times bestseller is called Personality Isn't Permanent. In other words, you can change yourself by making different choices. And once you've experienced this change, then success will be a natural byproduct. Um, as uh, Jim Rohn, the now deceased, uh, former very well-known coach, once said, after you become a millionaire, you can give all of your money away because what's important is not the million dollars. What's important is the person you have come in the process of becoming a millionaire. So that's the first hard-earned success principle a la Dr. Ben Hardy. Okay, the second one that we'll mention here, your vision of who you want to be is your greatest asset. So to quote Oprah Winfrey, create the highest, grandest vision possible for your life because you become what you believe. And that's basic psychology, that how you, you know, as a man thinketh, or what you think you tend to behave because that's the perceptual lens through which you view the world and subsequently experience the world. So no matter where you are right now, frankly, pretty much you can have any future you want. Yeah, for sure. You have to work within um, real world constraints to a certain degree. And we're certainly living in the world now where there are constraints that are real. But one thing is certain, um, you know, you have to, in order to harvest something, you've got to plant it. And so, um, you know, you want to remember that when you plant things, if you do it with intention and consciousness, then you have a much uh, stronger, larger chance of it coming to fruition. Mental creation always precedes physical creation. In other words, the blueprint you design in your head becomes the life you build or the, what you create or manifest. So just be aware that society is always trying to tell you, you know, how life should look, what's the so-called American dream um, or whatever the expectations of your societal group are. But you, all of us, are born with some aspect of artistry and, and being creators. So our life can be pretty much how we want it, um, regardless of what other people think, if we base our, um, our thinking and our actions uh, on unintentional things and then take the follow up with the actions to make them happen. So, okay, here's another hard truth to know before becoming successful. And we say hard truth, it just means not the usual suspects. And here's one. It's never as good as you think it will be. Well, wait a minute. That sounds kind of like you're putting a damp squid on things. No. Um, one of the enemies of happiness is adaptation. Now, again, this is a psychological prof uh, professor uh, from Cornell who studied the relationship, in this case, between money and happiness. He says, we buy things to make us happy and we feel successful, but only for a while. New things are exciting to us at first, but then we adapt to them. Now, in, in uh, economic theory, this shows up by wanting, first of all, uh, as we go through life, to gain things, acquisitions, consumer uh, goods in, not in quantity. So we, we get more and more and more stuff as we earn more and sort of work our way up the social system and the, the economic ladder. But there's a certain point where you don't want more of things you, quantity wise, you want better quality things. Um, and so the, you, you disband your quantity, you go for quality, but then within quality, you go for quantity and then shift to higher quality within the new quantity. So, <laughs> 
So savoring the anticipation or an idea of the desired outcome is generally more satisfying than the outcome itself, at least after a little while. Because once we get what we want, whether it's wealth or health or even excellent relationships, what happens is we adapt and then the excitement fades. So often the experience we're seeking ends up being underwhelming and even disappointing. And, and um, you know, we've seen this with kids where they, they bug you and they're persistent about, we want this, we want this, whether it's a toy or an ice cream cone. And once they get it, you know, you know, they discard the toy and they play with the box. Um, they moved on to something else in, in quite short order in many times. And also we see it very often with relationships. For a lot of people, the hunt is the game. And once they capture who it is they think they're after in the hunt, um, they lose interest and move on unless it's otherwise um, interesting. Okay, so that's a third of the hard truths about success. Here's the fourth. It's never as bad as you think it would be. Well, wait a minute. We just said it's never as good as you think it will be because we adapt. Now he says it's never as bad as you think it will be either. And here's the thing. Just as we deceive ourselves into believing something will make us happier than it will, we also deceive ourselves into believing something will be harder than it will. So the longer we procrastinate or avoid doing something, the more painful it becomes, at least in our mind. So once we take action, the dis discomfort is far less severe than you imagine. Even to extremely difficult things, humans adapt. Um, and Ben tells the story of sitting on a plane with a lady who has 17 kids. Can you imagine that? Yikes. Um, now, she had eight of her own kids. Then she and her husband felt inspired to foster four siblings, whom they later adopted, a few years later, they took it on another five foster siblings whom they also adopted. Now, um, of course, the initial shock to the system impacted the whole family, but they're handling it and they adjusted. And believe it or not, we could probably handle it too if we've had to. I mean, look what people have put up with in this recent spate of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Um, all kinds of conditions that six months ago, nine months ago we we would have said no way jose you know <laughs> ain't gonna happen and guess what it's it's not only happening but you know it's become a kind of a new norm so the problem with dread and fear is that it holds people back from taking on big challenges so what you're going to find no matter how big or small the challenge is that you will adapt to it when you consciously adapt to enormous stress guess what you evolve, and when you evolve, you have a higher chance of becoming successful. Okay, here's another hard truth. There is no particular way to happiness. Now, okay, not on the to, um, Vietnamese Buddhist monk says the quote that it, you see on bumper stickers and posters, there is no way to happiness. Happiness is the way. What he means by this is this. Most people believe that they first have to have something, like make the money, have time, be in love, before they can do what they want to do, travel the world, write a book, start a business, or even have a romantic relationship, which ultimately allows them to be something, like be happy, be peaceful, content, motivated, or in love. Now, here's the paradox. The have, do, be paradigm must actually be reversed to experience happiness, success, or anything else you desire. Remember I said these are hard truths, often counterintuitive truths about success. First, it helps to be whatever it is you want. So be happy, wake up happy, wake up compassionate, be peaceful, wise, or loving. Then what happens is, as we said before, how you think determines or perceive determines how you behave so you start doing things from this space of being and almost immediately what you're doing brings about the things you want to have so it's a it's a switch in the